before I respond. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, you, you must, uh, what I've went through is nothing compared to what you've gone through then. You must have went through hell and back. Physically, no. But mentally, oh, yes. I can, I can only imagine, sir. I mean, it would have def I mean, it would have definitely helped you learning how to survive and, 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 you know, doing all the cool, well, not cool, but things you had to do to live. So you would have learned a lot of interesting things about both yourself and, uh, uh, I don't know if you've met anyone, but I guess nature itself. Right. Ricky, why don't you tell me about that week that you were, uh, you were missing with friends. Did you, uh, did you happen to use any survival tactics? Did you just bring enough? So, um, oh, sorry. Oh. No, you're good. Keep talking. Okay. Yeah. So um, this was when I was about, this was when I was 18 back home. And, um, there was this cave, uh, just more into the rural areas of Queensland that we weren't really, <clears throat> we were told by our peers not to go to, but you know how we were back then, you know, we were, you know, you know, young adults were back then rowdy, wanted to have fun and be rebellious and go against the parents' wishes. So it was, so we went into this uh this forest area this? and there was a cave there and there was a lot of myths that people went missing and and um and you know uh it was some like ghosts and haunted spirits and all that. Someone even said the Kelly gang used to uh reside out there. So that was really cool. I, I don't know if you guys know about the Kelly gang. It was an old outlaw gang back in the like 1800s they were really cool but I, someone said their spirits used to roam around there which was really fancy but um yeah no one day we snuck out of our home told our parents we're going to the library to study for school and uh we, we i can guarantee you we, there was no library uh, at no point in time we did any studying but we um we went to the cave and uh one of my old mates uh one of my old mates nick he um he's the one who sort of orchestrated all this and you know, he was a cool guy of the group, so we sort of all fell through and decided, yeah, screw it, why not? Let's go do it. Uh, so we went into the cave. Uh, it was really easy at the start. It seemed like it was pretty easy to traverse through everything, but the group wanted to go deeper. And there was this girl that I was really into back then as well, and she sort of she sort of wanted to go as well. And I thought, you know, I want to try and impress her. What, 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 what are we talking about right now? The, the time I, I went into into the cave, uh, Ber Beric, Den. Wait, well, you're not Den. No, just Beric. Beric. Uh, yeah. It's uh, yeah. it's 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 Beric. Yeah. It's just just Beric. No. Is it, I promise me. I I I promise you. Myself and Den look very different. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't different. know who Den is. Look different. Uh, we sound different. Could not be it. Could not be any more different. Okay. I'm sure. Dan's a cool guy, but I, I don't know who he is, respectfully. But, I mean, you know, well, yeah. Let's, let's focus You're... on the point, right? There's two okay. Things, there's two things I'm going to cut you off with about your story, okay? Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm noticing two things. Sure. There is a lie, and there is peer pressure. You lied to your yes, parents? Yes, well, back back then, yeah, I was I was sort of re rebellious. I mean, that sort of goes into why I applied to become a police officer. But you'll see that on my mm. application, sir. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it, but that sort of may lead into why I sort of done the things, stupid things I did back then. Well, and how come let to me learn. let me ask: Does this story correlate to sort of the lead up to your application? Yes, in a sense. Um, I don't want to delve into it and, you know, bore you guys to mm. death. But, you know, um, long story short, you know, I was trying to impress the girl. So we went, we went further in. Um, and uh, at some point, it got to the point where there was no return, really. And we had no idea. Uh, but luckily, we were found after a week because my parents knew I really wanted to go into that cave. And that she, they knew I was going out with friends that day. So she asked... Uh, the police to check that cave in particular. And uh, thankfully we were able to be found after a week. Uh, we bought a bunch of snacks and stuff that sort of kept us going. We were terrified to shits, but you know, it, it sort of learn, learn things about each other. Um, and, and then I found out the girl was going out with one of the other guys anyway. So it, it was all for nothing really. And then my parents grounded me. 
They were not happy. But um, in terms of it leading to my application, was after my old man passed away. Uh, I sort of fell into that sort of rough crowd um, where I didn't really know what I wanted to do in my life because my, my old man was a police officer as well. And um, In Los Santos or uh, back in Australia? Back in Australia. He was a sergeant for uh, Queensland Police Service. And um, he was a little of a role model to me, but he passed away and I sort of fell into the, you know, my mum tried to do all she could, but it's not much else, you know, she could really do. It was sort of out of her hands for the most part. Now, I didn't do anything, I don't remember doing anything illegal, but at one point, one of my friends told me to deliver something to a friend's party. Now, he couldn't make it that day because he said he was busy and he was someone that I thought was my close friend. So I thought, yeah, I'll do it. Why not? Um, and then I got pulled over that day by the police because uh, I, I think I ran a red light or something. And by some sheer luck, the officer that day that ended up pulling me over was a best friend of my dad's, um, which I haven't seen since the passing of my father. And so when I saw him, I'm like, oh, Thomas, hello. Good to see you again, I guess. And he was, you know, we had a chat and such. And then one of, he, had a, he had a canine unit, a sniffer dog that... Uh, detected something in the car now you know i never i never did drugs i never got around them i knew better than to get around that sort of stuff but what was in that box that my friend gave me turned out to be drugs because the dog sniff the dog picked out that box and sniffed it and that that's when i thought my the rest of my life my life was over because i thought i would have been framed for something i didn't do and i would have went to jail and wouldn't be able to do anything in life but he, I, he could see it in my face. I was pale white, shaking up and everything. And I, I sat down on the curb just thinking, what the hell do I do? And he had a look at it. And he knew who my friend was because he used to always come around the house and see me with that friend. This guy's good. And Story-wise. He knew that that we're, guy we're was gonna pick it apart sort of a bad though. person for me. But I was a good one. He was a bad one. But he was one of my only good friends back then. So he started asking me questions. And by, like I said, once again, by some sheer grace of just luck, he didn't charge me because he believed me when I said that it wasn't me. And I don't know if he went after my friend, but he's pretty much told me to just walk away. He, he, I don't know if it was a favor to my old man. I don't know if it was a favor to me, but he told me to just, just to go. And I tell you what, I've never ran faster in my life than that day. At that moment, I, I was back on the straight and narrow, went back to my lifeguard stuff that I used to do and took that full time. Made mum proud. Mum found out about it. She gave me an ass kicking. And I just never looked back. And then, you know, years what came on later, I wanted something new. So came over to Los Santos. Uh, I took a job as DOC before the, the collapse of... Los Santos, and I was very happy in my spot in my position until the day in which my FTO passed away on the line of duty, and that really hit me hard. So I've sort of, I, I sort of quit the job, went back home, did a few things, and now I'm back. And I guess you could say the things that have happened in my life, I like to use them as a motivating tool. I like to use them to propel me forward and to make sure that I can be the per be the cop that my dad's friend was. And actually give people a second chance and and affect great change in the city so people can go home to their families and and you know not have to worry about you know getting hurt and getting betrayed and all that but that's pretty much it and, and um mm. that is my main motivator for wanting to become a police force i know you get it all the time that people want to affect change but i mean based on my experience i think i can I think I can be there for people and just be someone who uses their mouth and voice over, you know, a weapon and be someone who represents the badge, not flaunts it or flexes it in a positive light. I have a question. Of course, sir. Go ahead. When you hear police officer, what comes to mind? Keep it brief. Of course. 
when I think of police officer, the first word is trust. Someone who, once again, like I said, someone who's bestowed with such trust that they were able to represent a badge instead of having to flex it and hanging it and flying it around like it's just a badge with all power. But in a nutshell, someone who is there for you when you absolutely need them in any given situation. When you're down, they're the ones standing above you with their chin held high, ready to pull you up with them. Someone who puts their life on the line just so others can go back home to their family. So that's, that's as brief as I can be without me dawdling on because I've been known to speak a bit too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Barrett, do you have any questions up to this point? If not, I still have a couple. Yeah, I do. Did I sign up for a Bible reading? <laughs> um, uh, no, no, sir. I, I don't <laughs> see any Bibles. Um, I see a mop bucket, but no Bible, sir. It would be a bit of a weird place to have a Bible session, but you know, each to their own. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, crikey. Yes, sir. Where do you see yourself in the police department if you were to be hired? Where do I see myself in the police force? Well, what, goal, myself what goals would you have? To be... And, I, and once again, I apologize if this is something you hear all, all the time, but to be the difference in the force, I've, I've, I've met a few, I've met police officers in Los Santos, I met DOC, I met a lot of people, but essentially I want to be someone that is there for anybody. Doesn't matter if it's a civilian, doesn't matter if it's another police officer, I want to be someone that can provide a pair of ears for someone to talk to, provide us a heart that can care for someone in any given capacity. And honestly, I, as long as I have that badge sitting on my chest, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be the one who's going to be sitting here and being picky and choosy about where I want to go. I just want to see myself in the cop shop, really. And if I do have other intentions in the future, I will pursue them and goals. Sorry, if I have any other goals in the future, I will pursue them. But right now, I like to think of myself as the kind of person that takes, this, takes one firm step at a time. And I want to see myself in that uniform and to be able to help other people someday. That's pretty much as, as close as it gets. There's, there's no sugarcoating it. Right. So I'm just going to break it down for you. Of course, sir. Keep that as your goal. Because regardless of the, end, the, the outcome of this interview, when, when I speak to Captain Turner, your one and only goal, if you were to be hired and, and brought on, is to be a good officer. We want you to have the morals and we want you to have the dedication and the attitude that we come to expect in the PD. We don't want somebody coming in with a thousand goals in mind that are unreachable. You get to reach your goals the moment that you prove yourself, prove to yourself that you are capable of achieving those goals. Any goals of rank, don't dream them. You can you can have aspirations, but don't make that your one and only goal. Your goal should be to take one step at a time, like you said, and to make sure that you learn and understand how we operate. Because if you fail to learn the fundamentals, you will never grow, right? You need 100%. to crawl before you walk. A hundred percent. And I could not agree with you more. I was... I was the very same when I was DOC. I, I was just happy to be there. And I, I, I was the kind of person who, no matter the situation, I, I strive to learn from those around me. And I always wanted to be a good person, no matter who's in front of me, whether it's someone that's terrible, whether it's someone that's good. I just, I just want to be someone who people can look up to. And I wish I could have stayed more with DOC, but after, after, you know, after what happened, I think it was better for me to just take a break and come back stronger. I, I'm the kind of person who uses my experience, all my experiences in life, doesn't matter what it is, 
to teach me better. And if I've done, a, if I've committed a mistake in any given capacity, I'm the one who cops it on the chin. If I get knocked down, I will, not to quote Smash Mouth, but if I get knocked down, I'll get back up again. I, I will always cop the shit, shit to the chin. If I make a mistake, I admit to the mistake and I do better from then onwards, sir. How do you deal with punishment? How do I deal with punishment? How do well, you, let me rephrase that. How do you view punishment? And how do you take okay. it? Okay. So this may be a bit biased, but I guess because, coming from Australia, Australia is the kind of system that doesn't believe in punishment, but rather rehabilitation instead. So it, it'll take me a moment. It'll, it'll take me a moment to sort of adapt, but I do like to utilize that instead of just thinking about always punishing people, I want to steer them into the correct direction because that's sort of what happened to me. If I'm honest, I, I committed well, I'm, a mistake. I'm, I'm talking about you like individually. You're in the PD, okay. you're brought in. You do something yep. wrong. How do, how oh, do you- Oh, I do something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, if I'm, like 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 I said, if, if I get punished for something, then I own up to it. If, if, if I truly, if I can recognize, and if someone can recognize that I've done something wrong and I can see that, I will not come up with excuses for it. It's as simple as, yes, I made this mistake, Whatever the need to, for punishment is, no matter how un, I, how opposed it is going to be in my favor, it's a punishment for a reason. And I am to always trust the word of my superiors because they don't just sit there and punish me for no reason. They're punishing me for something that I've done. And that's how I grow as a person. It's I'm, I'd rather just be told the truth and not be sugarcoated and just complimented every single day on something even if i've done something wrong because then there's no room for improvement for me i think i'm doing everything right if i don't get punished big things in the pd are integrity and honor and and accountability you need to be held 100%. accountable for your actions and that is something very important now i i do i do want to steer from that you mentioned that you, you 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 did spend some time in DOC. I did indeed, sir. Yes. Just a yes or no answer. Was that within the state of San Andreas, Los Santos? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Now you are aware that we did have a uh, quite a collapse with the government, and we are currently in the process of rebuilding. Correct. Of course, sir. I I, I sort of expected it, it to be like that. Yes, sir. Okay. Currently, in our I'm going to call it newfound age. Uh, we are building on a foundational side. Some may say based on steps, like a ladder, right? Small steps. We're not trying to skip steps. There's a reason things failed in the past. And I, for one, do not like to dwell on the past, nor do I like to even refer to the past. The way I look at it is that in history and the way that it, it's, it's transpired is that the past is the past. It failed for a reason. And we've moved on to new things to adapt to. In, yes, sir. In that circumstance, understanding that in full, that we are we are about moving forward here and not living five years in the past, you understand that, you know, if you were to be accepted, uh, your time here would be fresh. It would be new. Your time here... Is is essentially a new leaf, completely turned over. Okay. Um, qu question question for that one, sir. Before I proceed to answer, sure. Although I've turned over a new leaf, there's always going to be that other side of the leaf still. Mm -hmm. And can I? Would I be able to, in any capacity, still use some of the things in the past to propel me forward in my duty today as inspiration and and professionalism and and conduct in general. Your so. your your professionalism and your past formulating who you are as a person today will obviously not be negatively affected toward you. What I will say put simply is if the opportunity comes that you are brought in and you have an opportunity to read through our standard operating procedures, make sure you understand them and those are the procedures that we are focusing on. Your experiences, 100%. your experiences, how you carry yourself, stuff like that, your personality, who makes you, you is perfectly fine. 
Okay. I don't want to hear you coming in though and stating, oh, well, back in the day, I, I don't want oh. to hear any of that. No, that, that's more than understandable. No, of course not. No, it's, this is me right here, right now. And this is you guys here right now. And whatever is given to me, I take that on as fresh new information. And that information is what I'm going to act on. It's uh, simple as that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to know a real question or a real answer. Yes, sir. Why should you be hired? At... All right, here, I'm going to paint a picture. Familiar words, Barry. Put yourself in a room of 700 people. Why should you be one of the, let's say, spitball numbers here. Uh, let's just say like three or four people to be hired. I guess in a room of 700 people, well, that'd be a pretty hot room, sir. And out of everyone standing around, I think I'm going to be the one that's going to be jumping up and down, trying to get somebody's attention, sir. I'm the one, I'm the head that's going to poke out. You're going to pick I'm me. The, I, well, if you're the hand that's reaching out, sir, you're that, you're, that's the hand I'm going to grab onto. What if there's no hand reaching out? Well, at that point in time, I'm shoveling myself through a room of 700 people trying to find the nearest exit. And while people are sitting there confused, stifled as to what's going on, I'm constantly moving. It's as simple as that. That's sort of how I've been all my life. I've sort of always been on the move, been an action-oriented person, you know, always... Okay, maybe always... a metaphor wasn't, be wasn't best here. You're asking as to what, why... What I... separates you from, this, let's say, 700 other people applying? All my life, I always came to believe that no two people are the same. If at the end of the day, if I don't make it in this 700, I'm going to keep trying up until that 1% ticks on, uh, shines a light on me. I'm the kind of person that doesn't give up because I don't see myself doing anything else apart sitting in that lobby, doing my best, reaching out, applying talking, meeting new people every single day until I get that badge on my chest. He'll be fine flopped the right into the calls right now. Me, it's it, called role play. I mean, we, we, I, I, I know what well, my formulation is, interview, and I see but I'm giving him an opportunity. He's been waiting for. almost a week to I come in. Chance, I'm giving him an opportunity to actually express his character. chance and knock it back. The goal here is to encourage role play, not take it away. that light, and if that light dims on me, well, I'm going to wait for the next available one if I don't make it. At the end of the day, it's it is completely up to you guys, and there's always going to be people that are better than me, and there's always going to be uh, people that I may uh, strive over. And I'm trying to see, I'm trying to sound humble here. I'm not trying to sound cocky, but every, like I said, no two people are the same. So if people are better than me and can get the job, then I'm proud of them. I'm happy for them, but I'm going to keep chasing that tail until I get it. No matter what, no matter the cost, no matter the price, no matter the time given spent at all i won't give up it's as simple as that i have a question you that? being surrounded by people that tell you that you're shit at your job or i your like co-workers are your co-workers are shit at their job your captain is shit at their job that is that is a personal opinion and i never let that get i never let that affect me yeah of course well, it's well, a personal like, opinion but how are you gonna deal with it well, I, I shrug that off. If people, if, if some random person comes up and tells me, let me rephrase that. My apologies. If someone's going to come and tell me that I'm shit at my job, regardless of whether they know me or don't know me, I will always take that on board and I will always find room for improvement because I'm not perfect. We're doing good, chat. They, they, that, I'm not, no one's perfect at the end of the day. There's always, every day is a new day to learn and if someone tells me i'm shit at my job i want to all dress chips then now. hey Fuck, you man. know that's their opinion and but i'm not going to sit there and i'm not going to sit there and delve on it i'm not going to sit there and think think about it for the next three nights i take it i put it on my i put it in my vest as a tool to use metaphorically speaking of course because i, I can't really put words in my vest but i will always see failure as as a new opportunity to learn and to be better I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm not going to sit there and argue with them and try to discredit them and belittle them. I take that and I move on. I have a question. 
Corsa. You're dealing with an altercation with another officer. You guys have some sort of a disagreement. Whether it be in the field or between you and the, the other party, let's say, in, inside MRPD. Who do you plan on talking to? My superior, first and foremost. Whether um, I, I don't know the chain of command just yet, but I, I don't know if I'd go to the captain right away. But it'd be my first, it'd be my first line, which would be like a supervisor. Um, I mean, I, I could, it depends. It depends on how far this has escalated, but obviously I want to try to clear the air with the officer and come to an understanding. But if it doesn't get to the point where we can talk about that it, that was what I wanted to get. I go at. to a senior officer and be like, look, me and this person, this person and I are having a disagreement. We're not seeing this the same way as we should be. We have different opinions and approaches. How do you think we should approach this? Do you think we should, you know, talk about it together or in the same room? Or do you think, you know, I'll let you do your thing. Maybe you go talk to them. Maybe you can give me some advice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to make note on your answer. I am just going to let you know this and, and let you take this how, how you will. Uh, when we hire yes, people into the PD, we want to hire adults, right? We want to hire people who are willing to try and take matters more into their own hands especially when it comes to another officer. We respect the chain of command. And while you don't understand it yet, uh, that will come with time. Yes, sir. Definitely make sure that you are, you are treating situations as if you would treat, let's say, family. Because the way that this PD is, is that it is a family. We are a group of people who have each other's backs. We want to treat each other as if we have each other's backs. And we want to continue that, right? A hundred percent. That That's how I sort of felt in DOC. I was very close with my co-workers and I had their six no matter what in any given situation. Um, I'm, I'm a very firm believer in relationships and bonds and I will be there and I will be there for my own just like they are for me at the end of the day. Okay. Um, here's a question. If you were a B, what B would you be? And why would you be that B? If I was a B, what B would I be? And why would I be that B? Yes. <sighs> now, I would say the beekeeper, like, like, like the movie, that'd be pretty cool. But a lot of what he does in that movie is, um, is What'd you think of the movie? I didn't mind it if I'm if I'm being honest. I mean, it is another Jason Statham movie, so I I, I love him, and I I know what to expect. Oh no! And sort of it was more or less oh, very enjoyable no, movie. Oh no! He's a movie. He's a movie like nerd. In the real world, Merrick, that, leave the room. You know, sit there and take advantage of others who who don't you know know better, and and that really that really gets to me. But it's good to see someone who actually took action. So as much as some of the acting was kind of bad from other actors, I, I enjoyed it. Hmm. What order would you watch the Star Wars movie? Oh, no. <laughs> We're done. We're over. Dear okay. Um, I know this is going to be quite unpopular. And just for clarification. Oh, of course. God, it's over. I would... It's actually fucking over. No, 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 not tonight. Forget from seven to nine. I don't regard those at all. Those were absolutely horrible. I would start from one, Phantom Menace, go to Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the, uh, Revenge of the Sith, then New Hope, then Empire Strikes Back, and then Return of the Jedi. I know the last three came out first, but chronologically speaking, one happened first before everything. Just saying. And, and then I watched the animated series, but you know that's not part of the question, so I'll just shut up. You lost a lot of points there. God, <laughs> uh, I knew it. I knew it. I, I, I'm, I knew it. I knew it. I, I knew what I was getting myself into. You know what though? I, I, while you lost points with Barrick, I will make note. You, you kept honest. Thank you, sir. I watched those movies far too many times. Uh, more than I'm. Now you know I'm. I'm proud to admit how many times I've watched the whole thing again and again. Honesty is key. 90% of the time.
No, ninety percent of the time, yes, or hundred percent of the time. No, ninety percent. Okay, and not not. Well, I mean, no, the truth, hundred percent of the time is never good. I mean, there are white lies which aren't as damaging, but still, yeah, a lie is a lie at its core. It's part of that ten percent anyway. But Lord of the Rings is yeah, better. Yeah, I thought Lord no, of the Rings was a shit movie. I hundred percent agreed. Sorry, uh, I said yeah, what I said. I'm ready. I'm ready for the backlash and the unfollows. One final movie question. Yes, sir. How do you feel about Interstellar? My number one movie of all time. <laughs> I've watched that movie in IMAX. I've watched that movie at home. I watched that movie when it came out. I absolutely... It's a new experience. I also didn't I like Harry it, Potter. Sir. I can't stop. I can't stop getting excited when that movie comes on. Wow, can we have a sidebar on the stairs? Yeah, that's fine. Actually, you know what? Stay here. Let's. Uh, well, actually, yeah. You know what? We'll. Yeah. Okay, I'll be down here. I think we should hire this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's got good taste. Listen, I like him. My 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 job's to report back to. Yeah. To to Turner as soon as soon as. Listen, all I'm saying is, as soon as you, as you soon as you could literally just tell Turner, he's not one of those weirdos that thinks Interstellar is a bad movie <laughs> and we should hire him. You guys ready for this? You guys ready for he's the bomb Australian. drop? You guys ready for the bomb he drop? Talks too much. Stand by. Yeah. I still need to see that movie. Have you at least seen The Martian? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't. I, I, like... I don't think we have any. Other... Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> You're okay, sir. Do your thing. Take your time. <laughs> I can't. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I don't think we have any other questions. Uh, up to, at at this point. Bear, do you have any other questions? Not for him. <laughs> All right, perfect. Awesome. Uh, I have a lot of questions on, like, why are we here? What do you mean? I, like, we are literally made made up of just, like, a, a million, billion, trillion little things that we can't even see. Each and every one of us. That, that is true. I guess there's no real way to actually know that. And we are that. inside a ball, which is inside another ball, which is inside another ball, which is inside another ball, which is just, which which is constantly moving. We don't know that it's moving, but it's moving, and it's like it's like going up or sideways or down, depending on which way you look at things. And we are just floating through a vast expanding nothingness that is constantly expanding at all times. I think no matter what, as, as much as humanity wants to learn something, learn everything, I think there are just some things that we're not meant to know, sir. I think some things we want to, we, we, we are to learn and other things we are just to be content with and just accept it as what it is. And exist. I mean, I was kind of just like asking the void. I wasn't really directing that question. Crystal was Ziggy right. bit. This oh, was a 3.0 oh, oh, bit well okay. before Ziggy. Uh, it's, it's only, uh, we had this yeah, on the enough. meeting board room so in 3.0. I don't want to hear I stole yeah. a bit from Ziggy. <laughs> we put that up on the meeting room. We put fucking Subway Surfer on the board every day. All right. All right. Okay. <sighs> okay. Okay. Clipping and uh, shipping? Which floor would you like me to press? Ricky, says... the fact that you don't remember is blowing my mind. I, I, I'm i not even going to take the gas lady from anybody. We had this um, as a bit. I think it was. Like a week and a half. Yeah, Every up. day it was right. loose bloom and flop. Down. And we were like, we need people to pay so, attention in the meeting room. And we put so like the Minecraft videos up. Again. And Subway no, Surfer down, ain't no fucking I way. Go to the front. No, definitely down. First, first floor, right? That's too. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just press floor one. 
Just gonna... I stand by this. There we go. We invented that bit. Oh, right. That's a load off my shoulders. Really excited for this interview. Pesky elevator music always kicks in. Dun, 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 dun. 100 percent bendir every every time someone rambles like for for duncan i've thought about throwing it up every time i have a conversation with duncan i'm not even gonna bullshit that that one i would take to my grave the reason you guys i know we should duncan, have in these elevators one of them the reason i have them with duncan is because most of the times we talk to duncan so he's not always someone taking to talk notes to, you know during these really long elevator trips. You never did. I did in 3.0, Ben Deer. I think you talk too much. Uh, okay. Yeah, understandable. I've been told that many times. Just accept that you're wrong about this one. It's okay. <laughs> Ziggy stole my bit, and that's all he needs to Who's know. The greatest football player of all time. Gr greatest football. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't really know if I have a number one, to be honest. To me, I like Messi. Messi's more, way more workmanship, I believe. But I think Messi is I, not I, better than Tom Brady. Oh, you're talking about that football? Oh, I, I thought you meant like soccer. Um, respectfully, sir, I've not watched a lot of NFL to be able to comment on that question. But I guess based on my understanding, yeah, Tom, Tom Brady is really good. Tom, Tom Brady's cool. <clears throat> I pl I've played Madden a few times, but. What do you think about Josh Allen? Uh, who, 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 All right. Oh, oh. Hey, there's the bell. Yep. Thank God. <laughs> thank God. Cause I don't know who Josh Allen is. What was that? No, not, not nothing, sir. No, I was just saying, I don't know who Josh Allen is, sir. Mm -hmm. Is he another football player, sir? We'll just, we'll just keep it moving. Uh, okay. Oh, hello. Hi, how you doing? Uh, best I can tell, that was uh, from his earlier three and ones that someone Slacks was dealing with, and uh, Slacks wasn't around today, so I didn't get to deal with it. But I assume he's probably going to need an attorney because he's up on a hut. But um, I'm uh, unfamiliar with the situation. Who who's asking? I'll 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 go help out with that. I think Rhodes is asking on. <laughs> Got it. On main. All, All right. right. So, Crikey, uh, I will yes, be sir. informing Turner of our interview, kind of give him a record as to what happened, go from there. Uh, at this I time, you are good. good. Do you have any questions for myself or Barrick? Um, if, if, if I don't make it uh, through this uh, wave or fleet, so to speak, would I need to, uh, would I just continue doing my thing? Or at this point in time, if I'm being declined twice, would I just need to apply again? Uh, I'm going to leave it up to Turner, uh, unfortunately, and fortunately, I, sh I should say, uh, that is up to the captains. That's not necessarily up to us. That's all good. Um, no, nah, no, no other questions, but yeah, thank you both for once again, you know, meeting with me and giving me this opportunity again. And I, uh, you know, hopefully I get to wear that badge someday and ride along you too. Well, right. fantastic. Thank you. You guys have a great day. Okay. You as well, Crikey. You, you uh you take care, right? What well, likewise. Keep being yourselves. Thank you. You did good. Yeah, you did fine. It's a lot of cliche answers. Yeah. I was just trying to uh, break him off that. There's a reason why I reminded him. Yeah.
All right. Uh, I let Turner know that you've already, you, you've given your recommendation as well. I think it's a good one. Yeah. He's got potential. I wanted to remind him that his, uh, his goals should be nothing more than a dream. But let me find a. Uh, is is Rose downstairs? Is that on patrol? Bye bye. Let me let me contact them. Or if they have a person they're taking in the ocean. What is happening on radio? We'll get oh, back yeah. out there. Let's go. It's a 77 request. The 32 over on Great Can't PPO Ohio. him. PPO is after cadet phase. That's like step two of the cadet phase. No one's just going to get PPO. Oh, McNulty. McLovin gets an interview. Um, I don't even know who that is. Maybe I do. I don't know. All right. That wasn't too bad. Yeah, I'm not aware of who's like getting hired on that. When, when I say to people that like le legitimately like that is like captain only, the fact that Flop's even being granted to do interviews for people. Um, that, like legitimately that is like up to the captains. The exact 20, I'm going to assume west of the 68 turnoff. Just a negative. It's a little bit further but, ahead. Yeah, around north, hookies, I would say. Uh, north of hookies. Copy, 107 around. So I do recall it being on the beach. Is it? Hey, firm, it's on the do beach. Do we have to take the off-road path by hookies? Hey, firm, we're gonna take yeah, the off-road dirt path. Uh, 16023. Who's more deserving in the PD to fill this temp position, though? I mean, it's. The responsibility falls on the seniors to kind of take over when the captains aren't around because chain of command right now is cadet, officer, senior, captain. So if captain isn't available, then it falls on the seniors. So, put simply. 160, uh, there does not appear to be anything on the beach. We're going to disregard two individuals. That I marked us up 10-8 again. Also, I haven't actually seen Interstellar. Or the Martian. Let me let me look up the Martian. I, I might have seen the Martian. Hold on. To me, those are the two best like sci-fi oriented movies that exist. I won't lie to you. I probably saw it when it came out or around that time, but I couldn't recall the movie. There's ranks between, but they don't have people filling those ranks yet, so. But yeah. One, one, three. The individuals uh, were not anywhere near the beach. As far as we're aware, they have a truck. They look like they're hunting. She has a deer carcass in her hand. Yeah, our, our chain of command is uh, officer, uh, senior, Sergeant Lieutenant Captain, I think. Also I think. Anything on scene. I know they changed the rank structure. I haven't really had a chance to look at it because we haven't hired anybody into any of those positions. Let me see. Recruit, cadet, probationary, officer, senior, sergeant, lieutenant, captain. Yeah, okay, I was right. Matt Damon's a space pirate. He grows potatoes on Mars. That's my kind of guy. Say, can you uh, question? There's individuals in a truck. Uh, we're on the scene of the 32, but there's individuals just east of the 32, almost by like the Chiliad Trail, that um, uh, verify that they have uh, hunting licenses and all that, just to make sure. There's a 
I just watched it an hour ago. God, what the fuck is that? The big boy. Holy fuck. Oh my God, it's a fucking little man. Little man's driving a fucking I, car. Get in the car. You, get you, in the fucking what, car. What are you doing in there? Hey. Jesus Christ. These fucking little men are at it again. Jim, get out of the fucking car. The gig's up. Is it, is it Jim? I don't know. Mr. Littleman, the gig's up. It's, it's one of them. I don't, I don't know who it is. Holy shit. I think he's just contract. I don't know. I don't. I don't buy it. I don't like it. I'm paid enough to do it. Then. I'm glad we both kind of had a what the fuck moment. Yeah. It's like the third time I've seen that actually. Forte, do you have a scuba gear in your car? Uh, let me check. I'll double check mine, but. One with each of the units that are responding to the 1032, switch to channel two. The channel two. I want to be in deep thought for a second. Was roughly around here, and then the second was further in, roughly where you are. So it traveled. Uh, the callers made the calls roughly around here. So I do see a boat out at sea as well that I just did see over, over the ridge line. All right. So I bought these yogurt bars, yogurt honey peanut bars. They're apparently like meal replacements. I mean, there's a phone down here. So let's see. What we got? Gun. Oh, wait for a mom. I'll switch channel one and I'll have somebody grab a scuba gear and bring it. Uh, 118, I do not have scuba gear and the individuals have valid hunting licenses. Okay, do they have, they have rifles, correct? Like, do you have some? Um, I didn't get them out of the vehicle, but I can I think we just had a 47 right next to us. Yeah, we did. Wasn't downed individual. He said he passed out due to hunger and they wanted to get him to the hospital. 107. Can you go get a scuba tank, please? Rhodes, I took a picture of the phone right below me. You want to grab it? Hey, firm. Yeah, what happened? I'm assuming you have to go all the way back to PD to get one bear if there's not anywhere else. Or do they sell Fuck. them out? Like, uh, yeah, there's also a 47 kind of in our area that just popped up. We we're trying to find, but we couldn't. So if somebody could uh, head back east, look that 47 while we circle back. Um, that 118. Oh, that 47. That 47 might be the injured. That might be the people I just spoke yeah. with. They just verbally confirmed that they had hunting rifles, or did you actually press for that? Verbally. You guys got down to in call, yeah. right? Well, I, they were coming way east, this group of people. Uh, 113, for context. 113 arrived on scene as we were attempting to get to the beach. We noticed a black colored bison with a female walking around. Robin and Wow not listening to be honest. A male on the hillside. That was problem was, number one. Was Wow. I would say <laughs> probably a mile away from the actual. Honestly, I, I I do understand why people like Wow. We, we asked them. I just can't do it. Um, is is Wow a laid back game for people, or do people play Wow like no, kind of sweaty? Trying to get up the hill and they were is that like a relaxed game? Um, and I asked them if they had seen anyone nearby at the beach or anything like that, and they said no. They were too focused on trying to get their vehicle up the hillside. Then we go to um, the actual scene of the 32. Oh, you were talking about the floating car, yeah. Injured, and that's when we sent Forte to go double check their hunting licenses. Both? They, really? They were actively Weird people make it sweaty. Uh, bro, do you want to you wanna talk to about something crazy? We'll Ooh! I want to share something. I got to share. I, I got to. What if we're looking in the wrong I got to share. What if it's in like a crevice by this rock? Just, just bear with me, okay? Hear me out. Hear me out. Oh, okay. Who's getting the uh, scuba gear? You, Barrett? Barrett, can you bring two, maybe three, just in case? I don't know how much. Last time carry. I bought scuba gear, uh, it, it... 47 code four. I don't know. I didn't give it to me, but he took my money. <laughs> okay.
All I'm saying is last night I was doing medium clues, okay? And I have done 480 of these motherfuckers. And it finally happened. It finally happened. I finally got the ranger boots. It took me way too fucking long. I finally got them. I know, don't don't all be too excited at once. I got me the, them rangers. Now I need to get the, the, the primordials or the pagasians. Which one is it? Hold on. The primordials. But yeah, anyway. Sorry. I got nothing on these uh, bushes in the hills. Anyway. You're a treasure. You never failed to surprise me. Listen. Can we do a medium clue on yeah, stream? Yeah, 30 same traffic when I was looking around. I don't know. Can we? I think I have more eclectic jars. Do I? Oh shit, I do! Hold up, we cook. Uh, Flav, can you come in Fuck. to the armory and pick up one of these scuba tanks? There? No, sure. Barrack, I'm playing RuneScape! You're on channel two, if Bob's not on the channel. I'm here. Oh, he should be on the channel. Uh, did you... Oh, I there see, I see, I see it. Yeah. Does somebody know that, um... Okay, when you're looking at dispatch and you're looking at the... All of the dispatch calls, is there a way to mark where the dispatch call was from that section? Let me check when we get back in the car, standby. So you're saying when you go to the actual calls and you look at dispatch and it's full, you're trying to confirm. You have to, you have to tap it with your right finger. <laughs> okay. Let's get a clue, squirrel. We're doing a clue on stream. Just one. Just one. Not a lot. Just a just 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 one. Just one. Surely we'll get one out of the 51 that I have, right? There it is. Oop. No, thank you. Okay. How many uh, scuba tanks are you bringing, Barrick? Three. It's okay, I'm not addicted. We're just gonna play a little bit of RuneScape. Okay, it's fine. Everything's okay. I'm assuming it might be in the area of where that phone was thrown. Listen, it, it's 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 fine. West of the outpost? Where the fuck is this? Ugh, I don't like this one. This one's our down. Let's see if we can do this before. Hold on. Let me cook. Hold on. Uh, what am I looking for? It's okay. This is fine. This is okay. Uh, our down. Then we gotta go west. Ah! Ah! Ah, my neck! My neck! You'll be fine. If I get ranger boots on stream, I'll, uh, I'll, sh I'll shit my pants. <clears throat> I'm on the island. 
this game is my everything i'm addicted and i'm i am sad to say it i think i, I picked possibly the worst fucking path to get over here what am i doing where am i going 24 hours of ranger boots yeah yeah totally Oh God. I think I could have picked a quicker teleport. I don't know where, but I feel like I, I complicated this whole process. It's all right, Shirley, we're just gonna, we're just gonna complete the clue and then we'll, we'll, we'll go back. It's, it's, I'm not addicted, I swear. Almost there. Well, I, I definitely went somewhere wrong. I could have, I could have picked the closer spawn. Freedom stronghold. I, I, I actually picked the wrong spot. Jesus. You're good. Who's that? Who's stupid tank do I have? No idea. It's gonna be somebody's though. Okay. Who are the two units that requested scuba tanks? At 160, you can just toss it over here on the beach. Copy. Did you, do, you, do you have scuba tanks with you too? I have one, yeah. Okay. And one in the long storage. Got it. Oh, full scroll. Go, go, go. Ah, ah. I don't have anything. New clue. Uh, oh, this one's in uh, the dig site. Like I said, there is a sailboat on the western side. I'm just gonna grab a dig site teleport. Um, one one three will see uh, if there's any kind of registration for the sailboat. Oh lord, we, it just could turn into a. Hi, Cone. I don't know. Here you go. Swim to you. Oh, thank you. Dab me up, dog. Sure, I'm not gonna make it back. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, of course. Right. I made it to a little island. Oh my god, a dog! Hi, you puppy! Yeah. My god, you're so me. cute! Hello! Okay. My name is Flop. Wait, come back. If we have to live out here, you Please. Know. A little boat. Oh no, I can't you run. Need O2 tank road? I can't run. I'm gonna need Luca, support, don't judge too. me. My blood sugar going low. Don't judge me. Dude, I got yeah, Luca. I got Ranger boots oh, yesterday. Uh, are you referring Luca, to what's the name of the book where you put all your like scrolls? Like the book of uh. That's the scroll book. I got it. We're good. I mean, if there's a thrown phone on the ground, uh, the SIM card's rocked out of it. It might be uh. It might be someone that was brought out further to see so you might be able to find that sim card in the water too it's gonna be hard but it might be i'm all like glitched i'm like scuffed i can't run well, it took you two years dude i don't want to talk about it it was pain can confirm it's a local that is I just want to finish this real quick. It, it was just, it, it was brief. Um, okay. Oh my god, I think I see a shark. Oh my god. It won't hurt you if you won't hurt it. I'm swimming, I'm swimming, I'm swimming. I'm riding the waves into land. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got the cipher reveals who. Oh, uh. Port. I'm safe 